This is my current vise on my workbench. Uh, my other workbench, I, I, I should say. My bench I use all the time is the ultimate work table. And since I've had that, you can see that this has become uh, pretty much a uh, pretty expensive shelf. Now, I'm going to show you why that I'm going to try and do this, uh, which is to take a moxin vise and mount it to the front of this. So here's what I don't like about this vise. It's a rattling chamber. You can't even hear me talk when I do it, but it, the other thing that you have to do if you have a vice like this is it's going to rack a little. So you have to have a spacer over here if you don't want it to jam up or put your work right in the middle. Now it's got good clamping power, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but for speed and efficiency, I guess that's the one thing that I'll like. This thing has got to be cranked all the way if you want uh, five or six inches, you've got to spin this and take it out all the way, you know, and, and listen to that racket. So I'm just going to put a tape on here to see what kind of capacity I had. Right now that's nine. Let me scale. I can get a, probably a full ten and a quarter out of it. It's getting right to the end here, I think. Is. So you can see what I have here. It's a, it's a massive jaw. It's 23 and a quarter by 8, and it's a full 2 and a quarter thickness. You can see I laminated a couple pieces together there to make that to make that jaw. And these are one-inch screws. So the you can see in the background here my moxin. And yeah, these are only three-quarter inch screws, but after using this for a while, this thing, the holding power and the ease of, of uh, clamping is much, much better than this. So that's what I want to do. I want to figure out a way to get that mounted to my to my uh, bench over here. All right, this is the underside of the bench, and you can see these are captured in these troughs that I uh, drilled here. And there's no bolts in, uh, in here that I can see anyway. So what I'm going to have to do is chisel this out and see if I can get this thing to drop out. And then this one over here, I'm going to have to raise my bench up and, uh, you know, get in there and chisel that out while it's up in the air and see if I can get that one to drop out. But we'll see what happens here. i got a little work to do ahead. And I'll get back to you. This thing's been together so long that I couldn't just pull the top up. I had to put some wedges between my toolbox and the top and tap it up to get it uh, started anyway. So now I'm going to get some thinner wedges in here. Um, I know that there's a big 10 in there. Uh, there's four of them. And uh, once I get it separated, I should be able to pick it up and uh, get it on its side so I can work on it a little easier than crawling underneath there. I 
think I'm hitting that tenon. Still not free yet. Oh, there she went. Okay. She's loose. That thing is a beast. So you can see what I have now. I think I'm going to have to remove these uh, struts. I'll have to see about that. Maybe I can just get some 2x4s in here to keep it off of that. I think that's what I'll try and do. So that when I lay it down I'm not, I'm not resting just on those. get those to stay on top of the tenons and lay this down. Can have, I have access back here to try and get these out of there. All right, I got a problem, and it's uh, you have holes here for uh, screws to anchor to your bench, and you can see that I didn't use these top ones because my bench wasn't thick enough, and so. But when I reach in here and this dog hole, I can feel the, a screw there, and I'm sure I've got one over there. One and one. And uh, I can't get to them. So what I'm going to have to do is bore a hole here, drill a hole. It's big enough to get to that screw and, and uh, pull the screws out, and then I can pull this out. I think I better change bits. Get ready to start a fire with that one. Let's see if I can get that. I felt it punch through. Let me see if I can see that uh, screw down there. Okay, I can get to it. Now the question is whether I can get it all the way out.
Looky there. <laughs> That's a little warm. I guess not. All right, well, there's one. All right, I got the one nut out. Now I'm going to see if I can extricate this one. So now, clean this mess up. I have to figure out a way to plug those holes. I don't even know what dimension, what size that is. I'll have to come up with something to plug them. But it looks good so far. Okay, I'm going to try and explain this to you as best I can, but uh, these are the uh, three-quarter uh, Acme threaded rods that we sell for our Moxon device and, um, and the, the hand wheels. So let me grab one of these here. So if you can imagine, I've got a new uh, um, vice jaw up here, then let's just say that's my vice jaw, then my handles would be on like this. And that's how they'll spin up and tighten up just like that, bingo. What I'm going to have done, uh, uh, Alan do for me is he's going to make those, you know, like, like you saw in his video making those plates, he's going to make me a plate, it's going to have to be a little bit larger. But it's going to be three inches wide. Uh, yeah, three inches wide by four inches long this way. And then I'm going to I'm going to cut a mortise in here, drop that plate in, and I'm going to have to to uh, hand mortise my leg. You can't see that, but this part right here, this is where my leg is. So I'm going to have a little bit of work to do right there in that corner on my leg for uh, for that plate to sit in there. But that that'll work out just lovely. I'm not I'm not afraid of that at all. But then what that does for me is it covers up this kind of this mess up here with these holes and uh, makes it look nice and clean. And that'll hold the nut in place. And then down here I'm going to have two other nuts uh, to give me support. And so once I get the hardware from Allen, uh, we'll come back and revisit this.